Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live on the start of this Easter weekend. Today's Good Friday. We've got Vale and Kirtley in Cape Town looking at the Two Oceans Ultra Marathon Fast and talking about the precursor events to the big race. Vale, good morning. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Sam. So the hustle and bustle that you saw a little bit earlier on ahead of the trail runs, the 10 and 22 kilometer trail runs has now left because they're all on top of the mountain. And uh, with me, I've got the GM of the Two Oceans Marathon, Carol Fussler. She's going to chat to us about all of these events that make up this festival of running that's known as the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Lovely to be here. So I believe you guys have got like over 10 events that make up the Two Oceans. Everybody, the first thing that comes around is of course the uh, iconic ultra the 56 kilometers but it's so much more than that that's right this is the 46th old mutual two oceans marathon we've got over 28,000 runners uh, 16,000 of those are half marathon 11,000 ultra runners which is amazing the interest has been fantastic we've got a thousand that have just gone off into the mountain we've got fun runs happening today for the kids a toddlers dash nappy dash a 2.1 player on the 21 and a 5.6 so it's very exciting in the fact that there's something for everybody that the whole family can come down and enjoy the fun and excitement and the atmosphere and also those people for religious reasons who won't run on the Saturday, they'll take part in the Friday run, which also got off on the early hours of this morning. I know I did mine last year. It was absolutely fantastic. And I think that's testament to the organization of the race. But what you guys are wanting to do is capitalize on the big name that Two Oceans is. And you guys have brought in something else, a beast trail run. Just tell us about this. That's right. It's 45 kilometers, which we've nicknamed the beast. Um, it's a tough one and the interest has been great. There is the uh, 22k as well for, for those who want to do it and we'll take a thousand runners once again up the mountain and that's on the 24th of May. Why couldn't you guys do it like on this Easter weekend? Because we are capped at a thousand uh, runners on the mountain. We've got to respect that, especially after the fires that we've just had in, in the Cape. So we are um, only allowed to have a thousand runners on the mountain at a time. You speak about the fires and that's obviously the reason why you guys this year have also changed the route. There's going to be no Chapman's Peak, not being able to see the other ocean as part of two oceans. It's going through Old Carp Sevach. That's right. We um, Obviously Chappies is our, is our first option. People love it, the view, the scenic of the two oceans. But after long discussions, intense discussions with the City of Cape Town, Western Cape Government, all our stakeholders and sponsors, we took the decision to change the route to go over Ocarp Sevach for the safety of our runners. Will this be something that will be happening next year as well? I mean, are you guys going to make use of Ocarp Sevach for a couple of years now? We saw that from 2000 uh, up until 2004. It was only then in 2004 that you guys reopened the Chappies route. So, I mean, is this going to be something that you guys are going to be doing for another couple of years? Well, this will be in consultation with, with uh, the city, with Chapman's Peak. Um, it's our first priority to go over Chappies because we know our runners love that route. Um, so we will see what, what the rains bring in the winter and hopefully a lot of regrowth on the mountain, which will then keep any pebbles and stones and sand falling off the mountain um, and being a possible risk for our runners. So we will certainly take a view uh, straight after this race and closer to next year's race. There's one million rand up for anybody that can break either Thomas, uh, Thomson Magawana's record or Frith van Amava's record. But some would say that that is rather safe now because it's going to be a lot more difficult. What's that going to mean, though, for the backmarkers who are only just trying to get in within seven hours? That's right. Um, Old Mutual have put up a million rand for the first lady and man winner uh, if they break the record. Um, but uh, as you say, we ran that route 2000 um, for four years and the times do seem to be a bit slower. So um, we'll wait and see. We'll see what the weather conditions do as well. Okay, and what does that also mean for some of those um, more recreational runners? Because although it's going to be a little bit tougher for your elite athletes to break the record, it's going to be even tougher for those athletes who are just hoping to break seven hours. That's right. You know, there's a approximately seven kilometer climb that's quite uh, windy and slow. Um, and then when people get up there, they misjudge the, the down, which is about three kilometers. And that can be quite tough on your legs if you don't pace yourself because after that you've got Southern Cross Drive, so one really needs to pace themselves. Hydrate, 
um, keep keep pace, keep and keep your spirits going. And I think that's also what the public of Cape Town come out in their droves as spectators, and which is part of the race as well. That um, you've got that support fr from the wonderful people of Cape Town, and they must enjoy the atmosphere. Your advice to the spectators. Spectators, I think there are sp um, spectator spots along the road. They just need to please be aware of traffic. Um, Okaap Savach will be open to one lane of traffic and we really are, are spectators to be very vid vigilant of the traffic and respect the traffic rules. Where can people actually find out information though, even those people that may want to come just watch a little part of the race and then get on with their, their Saturday? There will be marshals, there will be signage up as well as on our website which is www.twooceansmarathon.org.za and all the information will be up there. Uh, just a note quickly on the uh, Tommy, the Two Oceans Marathon Initiative. It's your fundraising initiative. Uh, last I checked, you guys, through the substitution process, had already made a quarter of a million rand. How much are you guys going to be giving over to the charities that fall under Tommy? We give every every cent that the runners donate, we give, as well as additional uh, charity donations from the Two Oceans Marathon. Um, sand parks have been the honorary rangers. We've built the People's Hut. We assisted them in that. So we like to do, we've broken up into four different pillars, one being environment, health, which we do in Cape Kidney Association this year, um, Western Province Athletics for, for athletics development which is obviously very close to our heart because we like to take this run to the broader community of South Africa. Lovely stuff. Uh, how much have you guys raised so far? We are on about just over 300 so, so we're very, very enthused by the donations from the runners. Lovely stuff and we always know that uh, runners like to have their own fundraising initiatives and that's something that's fabulous. We see the running community really opening up their hearts at, you know, when it comes to big events. Carol, thank you very much for chatting to us and all the best of luck for tomorrow. Thank Thanks very much. Carol Fosler is the GM of the Two Oceans Marathon chatting to us about the new route that's going to no longer be going over Chappies but for safety reasons are going through Ocarp Savach and you'll be able to catch the live broadcast of the race on SABC2 from 5.30 tomorrow morning right up until 1.30. Sam, it's back to you in the studio.